FM. This is yours truly, Dr. Jason Batson. And of course, today we're discussing health, health from a natural and integrated perspective. Uh, last program, we had a, uh, an interesting discussion. We touched on a few things. So keep in mind that the program is an interactive program. So in a little bit, we'll share those telephone numbers, WhatsApp, so that you could get uh, some information from us. Today, of course, we are actually discussing hormonal imbalance, which is something we had touched on before. But uh, we are speaking primarily on hormonal imbalance as it relates to females. And the reason for that is because you find a lot of the times uh, significantly, a significant rather amount of young women experience serious problems associated with hormonal imbalance. Example, you might hear they say that they have problems associated with fibroids, polycystic ovarian syndrome is very, very common, uh, endometriosis, which is actually thickening of the uterine lining. So we're going to touch on some of those today. And again, of course, as I said, you know, the program is an interactive program. So if you have any questions regarding uh, health, the product services of Batson and Associates, you can feel free uh, to connect, connect with us. Uh, keep in mind, of course, our locations. We are located on the first floor of Money Talks Building. That is Money Talks Building in Montrose, Chagonas, as well as Davy. That's uh, the south office. That is, of course, the corner of Ramsey Bush Trace and the SS Erin Main Road in Davy. The telephone number for Chagonas is 222-8261. That's 222-8261. And Davy is, of course, 223-7515. Again, that's 223-7515. So to basically you'll just remind them of the, the number, the WhatsApp on your side there, yeah, and we'll continue. Of course, our numbers are 6273-223-625-2257, and indeed your WhatsApp 306-1065. Nice. So we're speaking about hormonal imbalance. So within recent time, uh, we find a number of young persons, very young women, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years, are experiencing a number of problems as regards to their menstrual cycle. A lot of them have very painful periods. The period tend to be very irregular. Uh, in some cases, you find that, uh, um, you know, it, it's a very uncomfortable situation for, you know, the, the individual. The problem is a lot of times persons are not sure what to do, especially when they're dealing with very young women, as I mentioned, you know, um, 12, 13, 14, 15. Because the thing is, when you experience hormonal imbalance and you may have problems with a very painful menstrual cycle, uh, problems where you may have been assessed, where you do uh, an abdominal ultra, uh, abdominal pelvic ultrasound, sorry, which is an ultrasound that is going to um, examine the, the lower pelvic region, um, ovaries, that type of thing. Uh, and then in there, they see some sort of polycystic ovary, some sort of ovarian cyst, some sort of endometriosis, which is actually thickening of the uterine lining. Uh, it gives an indication that something is wrong. Now, some programs ago, I would have spoken about hypertension, and I highlighted two types of hypertension, which a lot of people didn't know, existed, which was primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. And secondary hypertension, of course, is hypertension that actually came from uh, a particular issue being the primary issue and as a result of that hypertension of course is a consequence of that particular primary problem which would either be hormonal imbalance insomnia those type of things good so when we're discussing hormonal imbalance the same applies in the sense that most of the time women have serious problems with hormonal imbalance i.e painful menstrual cycle irregular menstrual cycle um, one that may have um, a very heavy cycle and as a result of that they may experience problems associated with lowering blood counts because of course if it is you you have a situation where your cycle is um more than it's supposed to so as opposed to five or seven days some women may go 10 days some women go 15 days some women could go for an entire month and that of course is problematic because you're going to be losing large volumes of blood and of course the situation could reach a point where it becomes so detrimental that you know there's some sort of um invasive surgery has to be done whether it be um myomectomies where you actually have to go in and, and cut the take out the fibroid or you have to do an embolization where you actually cut the blood vessel leading to the fibroid or the third one which is 
not something that anyone should ever want to do in their life is a hysterectomy. And a hysterectomy, of course, is the surgical removal of your uterus. You have two types. You have uh, total hysterectomies and partial hysterectomies. Partial would be where the uterus is removed, but the ovaries remain. And total is if they remove both ovaries and the uterus. Now, that, that's a last resort scenario, but it is a serious scenario because most people who have to do that, of course, in now missing these organs primarily, your uterus, ovaries, then you have a number of issues to deal with, primarily problems associated with poor circulation. You find after someone does a hysterectomy, you could actually be hypertensive for the rest of your life. So there are a number of side effects that could come about with that. So the reason why I decided to discuss hormonal imbalance today is because just to inform a number of individuals, women listening, that there are things that you could actually do to correct that particular situation. So the thing is, once we identify what the problem is now, it is a matter now correcting the particular situation. Now, I was speaking about intestinal problems, and the intestinal problem is actually the primary problem that would have caused the secondary issue, which is hormonal imbalance, primarily having a lot to do with uh, the intestines where you, you, you're not digesting your food properly, you may have a lot of problems with constipation, for example, you are, may have problems with uh, a lot of uh, bloating, gas, belching. And the reason that that is so closely linked to problems associated with the uterus and ovaries and hormonal imbalance is because when you have that, that uh, gastrointestinal imbalance there, you're not getting proper elimination of waste. Your food is not digesting properly. Uh, improper assimilation. There's something known as poor peristalsis movement. Peristalsis is muscular movement through the digestive tract. A lot of people do experience proper peristalsis because, one, they may not chew their food properly, or two, your food doesn't have sufficient roughage of fiber. And as a result of that, that fiber is not um, giving the body the opportunity to move food along the gastrointestinal system and hence properly eliminate waste. And that primarily is one of the reasons why women experience hormonal imbalance. And as a result of that now, polycystic ovarian syndrome, fibroids, endometriosis, even infertility. There are a lot of women who, in a situation, they may be attempting to get pregnant for a while. And, you know, both parties have been checked out. You check out your husband, you check out yourself, and then they realize, okay, it's the female, and there are some things that maybe need to be adjusted in order for them to now actually procreate. And, and those are things that we actually do at Batson and Associates. Let me just, of course, um, remind you again of those telephone numbers and location. So if it is that is a problem that you have, or you may have a, a young daughter that have experienced the problem, well, then definitely you should give us a call and... Uh, let us help you correct that situation. And the reason for that is because, as I said, especially now, a lot of school age girls, I talk, I'm speaking about Form 3, Form 4, Form 5, actually experience this so badly to the extent that they cannot even go to school. There are times where they would have to take maybe a week off from school, and that's every month, because of how painful that particular cycle is. And that is as a result of hormonal imbalance. So again, those telephone numbers, uh, you can give us a call on 222-8261. That's 222-8261, as well as 314. That's 314-9975. That location is located on the first floor of Money Talks Building. That is Money Talks Building in Montreux, Chagodas. And of course, St. James is Red Edge Mall, Western Main Road, St. James. That telephone number is 220-8113. Again, that's 220 -8113. Eight one one three. So, base. We have any questions? Have question. Yes. yes have a question coming in here. Um, can a hormonal imbalance affect your metabolism? Yes, it can. Most certainly, definitely. That's a, that's, that's a winning. That's a lottery question. Me. Yes. Um, most women who experience problems with difficulty to lose weight, especially in 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 what they consider hard, um. Well, Areas that are very difficult, like, for example, abdomen, um, legs, buttocks, um, that type of thing, is usually as a result of hormonal imbalance. Because if you have excessive estrogen, uh, women need primarily a number of hormones to actually get pregnant, but they need a number of hormones in order to maintain proper hormonal balance, and they need those hormones in particular among. The key hormones we're speaking about would be, for example, estrogen, progesterone, gadanotrophin, and uh, uh, prolactin, and there are three others. So the thing is, if you have too much or too little of either of these, 
because of some of the reasons we discussed earlier, um, gastrointestinal um, problems, hormonal imbalance, it means now that you are in a situation where because of those excess hormones, you could actually have a situation where you have problems with losing weight or problems with obesity. Uh, I could go even go a little further and quickly speak about thyroid health because as the thyroid is a gland that produces hormones. Your thyroid produces T3, T4, which they would normally see in a, in a routine blood test. And it also has something known as TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. In instances where you have hypothyroidism or low thyroid function, one of the side effects of low thyroid function, or one of the key indicators, I should say, of low thyroid function or hypothyroidism is excessive weight. Because of what the thyroid does as, as it relates to metabolism, that excess um, or, or low thyroid function, hypothyroid function, low thyroid function, now puts you in a situation where you have a excessive weight and it is very difficult to lose weight so hormonal imbalance does significantly contribute to weight gain as well as problems with losing weight in key areas abdomen buttocks legs that type of thing okay yeah, so can hormone imbalance have cause any anxiety anxiety issues yeah um definitely it can because uh when you speak about pms which is postmenopausal syndrome or we're speaking about menopause which is when females cease um, from having a menstrual cycle and they, they, are, they are considered to have gone through menopause. So there are three stages that women can be as it relates to menopause. They can actually be pre-menopause, which is before menopause, going through menopause, and then what is post-menopause or after menopause. The problem with most women is after menopause, and uh, for example, a female might go through menopause, let's say she goes through menopause at the age of 45 or 50, women can experience post-menopausal syndrome or PMS, maybe five even 10 maybe 15 even 20 years afterwards if there is any sort of hormonal imbalance in the body it may not um bother you or show itself early in early early stages but later on these women realize they have problems with depression anxiety um emotional disruption where you have they would be crying uncontrollably for nothing um, it is because of that particular issue associated with hormonal imbalance. At, at Batson and Associates, uh, there's a product we carry called Women's Formula. Very, very pro um, popular. And what Women's Formula does is basically a product designed to balance the endocrine system where women are concerned. Because remember, it's not a matter of the hormonal imbalance situation. So things like the polycystic ovaries, the fibroids, the ovarian cysts, the endometriosis, those are all a consequence or a cause of a greater problem. So we have to go to the source. And as I said, one of the sources has to do with the proper assimilation or the digestive system, as well as a number of, of other systems. And that's why we do uh, the blood analysis as well as the magnetic resonance analysis scan at Batson and Associates. I mean, that's one of the tests that we do. Uh, blood is a mirror. I always tell persons that and your blood identifies a number of challenges in the body. So your, your blood is actually able to tell what is known as past, present, and future. So the thing is, just by actually taking a sample of your blood, capillary blood, we don't use venous blood. So the blood is taken from the tip of your fingertips, right? Um, if it's a baby, well, then we we'll take it from under the feet um, of the baby. But in any case, it's capillary blood that you use. The thing is, because blood technically is a mirror image of you internally, it gives you a number of different um, a, a, a number of different information as it relates to a number of things. Do you eat on time? Just doing a blood sample, we could look at your blood on a microscope and tell you whether you eat on time or not. You know? We're also able to determine problems with enzymes. So, so a lot of persons who have digestive problems, a lot of bloating, gas, constipation problems, we actually can see that in our blood analysis. You're also able to see liver conditions, the condition of your kidney. You're also able to identify uh, gastrointestinal problems, which is is major because usually in, in, in mainstream or what is referred to as allopathic medicine, in order to determine if you have gastrointestinal problems, they, there are a number of things that they could do. They could do stool tests, they could do various urine analysis. You can also do what is known as an endoscopy, where you take a camera, I mean, camera, sorry, insert it and look in the oesophagus, stomach, that type of thing. Or you do a colonoscopy, which is the reverse, where you go to the anus and you go and look at the intestines and that type of thing. 
So, and those are, 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 you know, invasive procedures. The thing is, with a blood analysis, you're just looking at blood. But that blood is going to give you key indicators, key amounts of information that will actually indicate or show different levels of gastrointestinal problems. So you can feel free to give us a call or visit. Again, that number for head office is 222-8261. That's 222-8261. And of course, you can make your necessary arrangements for your appointments or find out anything else you need to find out there. Any more questions, sir? Um, in terms of, well, speaking a lot about women, but mm -hmm. does this affect men in any way? Oh, a, a good question. It actually does. Hormonal imbalance, I mean, there's something that is not discussed, is not, um, at least by many people, simply because, you know, men are just like that, just men. So, you know, um, some things you think you can ignore. However, there is something actually known as andropause, which is actually referred to as male menopause. Now, what andropause is, um, the male hormones in the body, or the hormones that are characteristic of men, that and in order for men to maintain, for example, proper male function, sexual function, that type of thing, your androgen is supposed to be working very well. Apart from that, testosterone plays a significant role in proper male function. The thing is, you have, as I said, andropause, which is when men actually have issues with hormonal imbalance, and those things can actually show by a number of things, um, loss of or, or interest in uh, intimacy, uh, erectile dysfunction problems, uh, problems associated with even um, issues with uh, energy level and those type of things. Usually, it indicates some level of low testosterone. Now, low testosterone or testosterone um, you find that once those numbers start to dwindle, as we start to get older, as I said, you'll experience various things. You're going to have problems with sleep, male function, um, just interest in intimacy or anything like that, that significantly is lower as a result of having low, low T or what is known as low testosterone. Now, of course, the question is to someone listening to this, how do I correct that? Um, I, I am not a, a, a advocate of uh, testosterone injections and certain types of injections. Simply because uh, when you're dealing with low testosterone, you want to do or fix the situation in such a way that you help your body to naturally produce and maintain optimal, optimal sorry, levels of testosterone. Um, exercise is one. I mean, even though some of us, sometimes our schedule doesn't allow us to do that. But various forms of exercise, especially if you're doing things like squats and lunges and uh, if you somebody you run ball, play football, a any exercise that involves a lot of leg, leg work or working the lower extremity of, of the body, they're primarily engaging what is known as systemic circulation, which is circulation below your heart. That can elevate testosterone levels. Also, the various types of foods, so we know nuts, grains, so things like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, those different types of seeds and grains, um, very good for women, but of course, exceptionally good for men as well simply as we discuss in this aspect of low, low T and low testosterone. What are some of the symptoms you do apart from that? I forgot, uh, actually losing hair, thinning hair. Um, male pattern baldness is actually a, a key indicator of hormonal imbalance in the body. Men who lose their hair very quickly, I mean, you have some genetic predisposition, yes. However, it plays a significant role um, because diet and lifestyle could actually fix that situation. Of course, once you, you start dealing with it early enough, but again, those are indicators of hormonal imbalance in male, in men, sorry. And as I said, it's much easier to correct in men than women, in all honesty, uh, once one is diligent and make the necessary adjustments to diet, that type of thing. Uh, we know if, you, if you're a smoker, you, you're, at a, you're at higher risk of developing problems with low T. So being the practical individual, and I, I am sorry, I always tell persons, if you have certain habits, you know, you need to try and do things to negate the, the negative effects of those habits because you can't do everything bad and expect to end up with a good outcome. That just don't make any sense. Right? So um, even prostate problems, you know, prostate problems continue to be a big, big problem in Trinidad and Tobago, primarily Tobago, especially where you have, you know, men actually having surgeries to have their prostate removed. I will never be an advocate of that at all, at all. Uh, however, I always strive to help with persons to understand, men especially, how important it is to have your prostate checked at an early age. Now, the digital exam is not something that people do again. That digital exam is one that is very uncomfortable. A lot of men shy away from that because they figure, you know, uh, I just ain't going through that. And um, you can respect that. There are other 
methods that you could do to actually um, know if your prostate is healthy or not. Some of those we do at Baxter and Associates. The blood analysis is going to give us a key, key indicator. Then, of course, you have things like the magnetic resonance analysis scan, which is going to look at prosthetic hypoplasia, which is swelling of the prostate. Because of men, as we age, all of us, you're going to, your prostate is going to increase in size. However, the exorbitant increase is the issue because a lot of persons who have what is known as BPH, which stands for benign prosthetic hypoplasia, is an indication of a swollen prostate. And of course, keep in mind, if the prostate is swollen, it's going to actually rest on what? The bladder. Hence the reason why men have problems with their prostate. One of the key indicators is frequent urinating at night. Um, even if you drink high, large volumes of water in the evening or even in the night, you're not supposed to be urinating seven and eight times for that night or the, for that period of the morning. That is a key indicator. One of the other indicators, of course, and things that you can do would be things like prostate ultrasounds, transrectal ultrasounds, you have MRIs, you have CT scans. So the thing is, you have different diagnostic tools out there that men could actually take advantage of. And I'm glad that that question came up because, gentlemen, it is becoming more and more a sad reality that a lot of men end up with prostate cancer. In fact, the World Health Organization has stated that if you look at the cancers in the Caribbean, especially Trinidad and that type of thing, you would realize that prostate and breast cancer within the past about 10, 15 years has significantly increased. So you know, it, 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 it is, of course, the onus is upon us to actually look at ourselves and examine and see exactly how we ended up there. I always tell persons, you don't end up in those situations, you know, um, exercising and walking around the savannah and drinking plenty of water. If you was doing that, possibly you would not have been in that situation. So, you know, it's a matter of, again, looking at the lifestyle. And again, that's something we deal with at Batson and Associates. There's actually a tea that we carry, which is a prostate tea that is very popular. We have a prostate tea and a male tea. And, um, you know, a lot of persons come and they use it because it actually helps in maintaining and improving prostate health. So that is something you could also um, look at as well. Uh, keep in mind that telephone number again is 222-8261. That's 222-8261. And of course, Tobago, we can't forget Tobago. Tobago actually got their new office last week. Um, and that office is, of course, located in the Triangle Building in Scarborough, Tobago. And that telephone number for that office is 226-4553. Again, that's 226-4553. To this, all right, what are some things that can make your hormonal imbalance worse? Ah, good question. Make your hormonal imbalance worse? Diet. Uh, as I said, lifestyle and diet significantly affect that. Uh, alcohol is something that, you know, um, a lot of people don't like you to tell them about because they believe that, you know, alcohol is water. However, that's not the case. So um, you should check your, your alcohol intake, you know, make it as minimal as possible um, until, the, of course, you correct the situation. And then after that, you have to, um, you know, exercise some sort of discretion going forward. Uh, coffee is also going to gonna cause some problems in that area. Sugar. You know, sugar, I tell people sugar is, is in the culprit in, in everything. Unfortunately, a lot of people identify sugar as they think it's either brown sugar or granulated sugar. They don't understand when you're talking about sugar. There are sugar, there is, sorry, sugar in so many different things. Um, hydrogenated oils, those are oils that are denatured by heat. So, you know, various oils that are, so a lot of fried foods is something that you, should, you would not want too much of in your diet. Also, you have to look at the glycemic index of the meals that you're having. So more provision more brown rice as opposed to white rice and you know try and include some sort of greens and roughage in there a lot of men end up with those problems because they do not have sufficient fiber in their diet so things like chia seeds flax seeds those type of seeds very important in actually improving or increasing the soluble fiber and insoluble fiber in the, in the body and that of course could help men you know negate the negative effects of that hormonal imbalance um, changes your water intake as well um you remember the rule for that is your body weight divided by two in ounces um additionally it might sound simple but it's actually a very serious thing consuming cold water now you can go out and you take a little lime and you drink it a beer or something i mean i don't expect you to drink it hot obviously but if when we look at water your regular water intake that should be room temperature and you should include some hot teas in your dietary regime cold water is very detrimental, but it is even more detrimental for men than it is for women, especially as it relates to male function, sexual function, that type of thing. Okay? 
That's all the questions there for now. For now, okay, good. Uh, keep in mind we are live on our social media platforms. We have Batsman Associates Limited on Facebook. On Instagram, we are Batsman Associates TT. And on YouTube, we are Batson and Associates Trinidad. You're listening to Dr. Jason Batson, the Senior Medical Director at Batson and Associates. And today we're discussing um, hormonal imbalance. We started with the women, then we went across to the men. So, of course, keep in mind if you have any questions regarding uh, that particular situation, you can feel free to give us a call. Let me just answer a question quickly on our, our WhatsApp here. Someone is asking if infertility can be called, okay, yeah, all right. So I mentioned that if a couple is attempting to have uh, a baby and they're getting problems, that the problem is not necessarily only the female. It can also be the, the male, especially based on what I'm discussing here. So that's the question. The question is asking, if um, in a situation like that you think is the man, what should be done? And of course, there are, there are various tests that you can do uh, where they will actually do um, various uh, tests associated with sperm. So they want to look at motility, um, the amount, if, if, if um, you are actually producing the amount that you should, and of course, the health of the sperm. And, and those are easy tests that could be done. Uh, one of the things I always tell men, uh, zinc. Zinc is a very, very good uh, supplement for men, especially as it relates to, 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 it's very good for the immune system, but it's exceptionally good for male function, sexual function. It's also very good for prostate health as well. One of the things that we always experience uh, is when we do blood analysis on men who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer, and we actually deal with a few of them well right now. Uh, one of the things that you always find is digestive imbalances and problems associated with digestion. Now, one of the things that a lot of persons don't realize is that where your digestive system is concerned, there are a number of things that you can do to actually make your digestion worse. A lot of people don't know that. One, eating and drinking at the same time, or what, or eating and drinking simultaneously. So you eat your drink, you eat your drink. No, no. That interferes with the way your body actually digests or assimilates food. So that's something that you shouldn't practice. Ideally, you should uh, drink about 30 minutes before your meal, and uh, to, uh, either 30 minutes or an hour before your meal. During your meal, you chew your food properly. And then subsequent to that, when you finish eat, maybe a little, maybe about four ounces of water to take whatever supplement you're taking, whatever the case may be. And, and then after that, you drink water uh, on an empty stomach, which is either an hour before a meal, ideally, or maybe two and a half, three hours after a meal. So, so that's the gauge that you're looking at as it relates to your food and water. You know, the Western world has a very bad habit where we are actually eat and drink simultaneously. And in some cases, you're not even eating, like, I mean, drinking water and eating your meals. You actually have, may be having a soda, maybe having coffee, maybe having juice, whatever the case may be. The problem with that is that you actually dilute the digestive juices in the alimentary canal, and that causes serious problems, especially when it reaches the point for the body to digest protein. A good, uh, one of the other things you need to pay close attention to as well is uh, as it relates to prostate health, you know, observe yourself. You know, if you're having problems with frequent urinating, that's a sign. If you're having issues associated with uh, stoppage of water, well, that's even more concerning. Um, so, for example, you go to urinate and you realize that there is a delay. You may have to wait, you start, you stop, that type of thing. Um, you find your flow is not as strong as it should be or powerful as it's supposed to be. And you're drinking, you know, um, your correct amounts of water, but your flow is very low. Those, again, are, are key indicators that something is wrong and you should have that checked out. Uh, the only difference with what we do at Baxter Associates as opposed to um, what is done in Western medicine or what is referred to as allopathic medicine is just simply dealing with the root cause of the problem and not necessarily dealing with the symptomology. Because if you have swollen prostate, the prostate is enlarged, usually what is recommended is some sort of maybe Flomax, Diodat, Hytrin or something like that. And those type of medications either interfere with um, testosterone levels to lower it, or in some cases, uh, muscle relaxant in the case of Flomax. Now, that is going to work in the short term, but when you're looking at long term, where you have a swollen prostate and the prostate is not going down, what is causing the prostate to be swollen in the first place? And that is where you need to you know, make some reassessment uh, and readjustment in terms of determining where the problem is and of course dealing with the root cause of the problem to bring about uh, a better um, uh, outcome. You know, um, PSAs, a PSA stands for prosthetic specific antigen, 
And that is, a, that is what we normally use when we do blood, blood tests so that you would do a PSA. PSA usually is supposed to be anywhere between zero to four. However, the, the caution with that is that your PSA is not the most reliable test for prostate health. It is not. Because you can have a prostate reading below four and have prostate cancer, or you could have a prostate reading way above four. I'm speaking about 50, 100, and you may just have some prosthetic hypoplasia and, and we, we have corrected that in the past. So it's very important, again, to know exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it. Uh, so feel free to give us a call. Uh, I do like the, the, the blood analysis for prostate health because, as I said, it actually gives us an in-depth view of something known as biological terrain, where we can actually see that whole digestive system if your food being digested properly. A lot of persons, your food not being digested properly. It's not. And you know you may be eating well, you may be doing certain things, but it's fine, you're still sick, you're not sleeping properly, you're still very tired, you have headaches, you may have problems with um, with body body odor, I mean, um, where you may have problems with pers um, perspiration or something like that. And all of those are, again, indicators of, you know, needing detox. Uh, there's a seven-channel detox we carry at Batson and Associates, it's called Santulan. And what Santulan is, it cleans and detoxifies kidney, colon, bloodstream, liver, lymphatic system, skin, and your lungs. Now, very quickly, based on what we were speaking about with prostate health, there is also something known as prostatitis. Now, prostatitis is infection of the prostate. But keep in mind that prostatitis, which is infection of the, of the prostate, can actually cause swelling of the prostate. So the thing is, you may have a swollen prostate. You may experience um, delayed urinating. You may experience um, stoppage of water, you may experience certain things, and it doesn't necessarily have to be BPH, it's benign prosthetic hypoplasia, but it can also be prostatitis, which is infection of the prostate that can cause that swelling. So that is something that you need to also pay very close attention to. So again, those telephone numbers and locations, we are located on the first floor of Money Talks Building. That's Money Talks Building in Montreal, Shabonas. That telephone number is 222-8261. That's 222-8261. Dede is the corner of Ramsey Mood Street and the SS Erie Main Road in Dede. That telephone number is 223-7515. That's 223-7515. St. James is Red Edge Mall, Western Main Road, St. James. That number for St. James is 220-8113. That's 220-8113. And Tobago is the triangle building in Scarborough, Tobago. That number is 226-4553. Again, 226-4553. Third Basin, you have any questions? I don't, why is it when you get on a little elevated PSI, um, a reading they tell you cut back on meat? If you get an elevated P, uh, PSA, they said they have PSA. This. Right? PSA. Um, well, yeah, because again, uh, when you're looking at, at digestion, right? Digestion takes the most amount of energy from the body, the most. Hence the reason if it is you have the cold, you're not feeling well, the first thing your body automatically does is do what? Stop you from eating. So it interferes with your appetite because your body doesn't want food so that it has to use all this energy in the digestive process. Your body is trying, you're ill, so your body is trying to conserve, conserve energy. Good. So with that particular principle, a lot of persons have to understand that with meat, when you have problems with uh, elevated PSA or maybe prosthetic hypoplasia issues, that is an indication of high levels of inflammation or inflammatory response. Meat increases inflammation in the body. And that's what I was, I was saying earlier in the discussion. You have to understand it is like a glass of water. So you have a glass of water, the water is full, the glass is full. If you throw more water in that glass, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow, right? So the same applies when you have high levels of inflammation. If you add more inflammatory foods, which is something that you'll be doing on a daily basis. So let's say you sit down and eat meat every day for the next month. You're going to actually make that situation 10 times, 10 times worse than it already is because of the inflammatory response associated with the digestion of meat in the body and that type of thing. Remember, meat produces a lot of nitrogenous waste. And as a result of that, you find persons, for example, elevated high blood pressure. Look at anybody who have really, really bad high blood pressure. Most of the time, they meet eaters. Now, you have persons who may be vegetarian and have hypertension. We're not saying no. But a lot of the times, it has a lot to do with that um, high amounts of meat in the diet. 
So that's the reason why they tell you to, to um, you know, reduce it or stop it completely. Same with cancer. With cancer, high levels of inflammation is going to make it worse. So if you're diagnosed with cancer, the correct thing, of course, is to use less meat and try and use more, I mean, fish. And, you know, lessen that nitrogenous waste that, you know, conserve more energy in the body where you're making digestion much, much easier with what you're actually consuming. Okay? All right, great, man. That's all questions for now. All, okay. Oh, yeah. Nice, man. Right. We have a question here from, uh, this is actually Alicia. Uh, she's messaging us on Facebook. And one of the questions she's asking, uh, in, in, not really in relation to what we're discussing today, but she's asking, as it relates to circulation, if you have problems with pins and needles, is that an indicator? Uh, but the answer is yes. Uh, I actually spoke about high, uh, circulation some weeks ago. The thing is you have about 66,000 miles of blood vessels that run through the human body. Your arteries, your capillaries, and your veins. We know the arteries are larger. Uh, the veins are smaller in diameter, but they are more elastic. And then, of course, the capillaries is what is known as microcirculation. That's circulation in the tips of your fingers, tips of your toes, um, your head, circulation in your brain, sorry, or the cerebral, what is known as the cerebrovascular area. So the thing is, if you have problems with pins and needles, if you like things walking on you, especially if you're a diabetic, that is an indication of poor circulation, yes, but it's also an indication of neuropathy. And I was actually discussing that this morning. So neuropathy is nerve damage as, as a result of poor circulation. So if you're not getting sufficient blood flow to different parts of the body, especially the legs, what you're going to find you're experiencing, you're going to start to get swollen ankles. You're going to find your legs swelling at certain points in time. So you, you, you go to sleep, you get up in the morning, your foot nice and small. During the day, by the time you stand up, you walk, your foot swell up. No. Poor circulation. That's something that you need, it needs to be addressed because it is actually showing early signs of cardiovascular problem. So um, that's one. Pins and needles, cramping in your calves especially, is also indicator of um, you know early signs of cardiovascular, poor circulation. If you have hypertension, I always tell persons hypertension is a key, key indicator of serious distress in the body because with elevated blood pressure, we know, <clears throat> excuse me, Sorry about that. Yeah, we know with blood pressure, if your, your systolic is your top number, your diastolic is your lower number, right? If your systolic numbers are in excess, they normally tell you 120 over 80. I mean, in, in practicality, you can't be 70 years and give my blood pressure 120 over 80. Now, you can, eh? But in instances, you, you don't really expect that. So if you have a 130 over 75, a 130 over 80, your diastolic or your lower number, should be up around 80 and under 85 and under we could work with when you're passing 85 that's a little challenging because it means it has some sort of ischemic situation taking place you may have some sort of hypertrophy um where your where the cardiovascular system is concerned and that type of thing but it's a key indicator that your circulation is off and it needs to be addressed but in addition to that what it also shows and what a lot of persons need to pay attention to and I think, quite frankly, in my experience, because I get a lot of clients like this, you end up with renal failure or kidney problems if it is you are hypertensive and you do not know, or if it is your hypertensive for extended periods of time. I will say that again. It is very easy for you to end up with renal failure or end up on a dialysis machine if you are hypertensive for years and also if you are hypertensive and you do not know. So the, the challenge for you is, of course, to know your numbers. And I always tell persons this, you know, once you reach a certain age, you should have some sort of machine device at home to at least monitor your blood pressure. I say, you know, 40, 45 years and, and, and older is good. In fact, we might need to come down because some years ago, 40 was good, but we have people getting strokes in 20, 25 and 29 and that type of thing. So I tell persons from 35, at least have a pressure monitor in your home. And, you know, ever so often you check your blood pressure to make sure. Because what we experience in a lot of the times is that there are a lot of people walking around who are hypertensive. I mean, there are a lot of people walking around who are diabetic too, you know. But the problem with hypertension is that hypertension is, uh, what's the word I want to use, boy? Injust, unjust, sorry, in the way that it deals with you. Hypertension can damage you immediately. I'll give you an example quickly. 
if you're hypertensive, you're not managing your blood pressure, you're not looking at your numbers, you can actually go to sleep. And a few things well can happen for you while you're sleeping. You can get blind during your sleep. You can have a stroke, um, which is an ischemic stroke. Ischemic strokes are strokes where lack of blood flow, lack of oxygen to the brain. You could even end up with worse, a hemorrhagic stroke, which is a bleeding stroke. And that's where lack of blood flow, lack of oxygen, but you now have blood vessels that have ruptured in the cerebro cerebrovascular area, so in your brain. Or you could end up in a situation where you can have serious problems with your kidney just in a short space of time. So if you are hypertensive and you know you're really serious about dealing with that hypertension, um, you know, come off of the, 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 the crutch I tell people of, you know, saying that you come from a hypertensive family. Yeah, no such thing as a hypertensive family. It's just everybody eating or doing what they're not supposed to be doing. And you just continue in that, you know, you didn't really make a concerted effort or, you know, some sort of um, effort to change that. And that is, of course, where Batsman Associates comes in. So, you know, feel free to give us a call or visit again. Let me give you those telephone numbers quickly. Just for the Shogunas office, that office is located on the first floor of Money Talks Building. That's Money Talks Building in Montreux, Shogunas. That telephone number is 222-8261. That's 222-8261. And Debe is, of course, the corner of Ramsam Trees and the SS Erie Main Road in Debe. That telephone number is 223-7515. 223-7515. As we always say at Baths and Associates, if you think health is expensive, try sickness. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. To the listeners of 106.5 FM, thank you very much for your time. To the base, sir, it was a pleasure. Until next week, take care of yourself. Thank you there very much, sir. Of course, you've been listening to Baths and Associates right here on Freedom. 106.5 FM. Are you ready for a show that will leave you feeling informed and empowered? Empowered. Look no further than the human impact. Nice. So, uh, Facebook, I'm not seeing all here because we, we, we shot a device. So I hope all is good. Right? Uh, but we're going now to. Good, good. That's no problem. Yeah. So, uh, listeners, yeah, the love is still there. We just are just not able to maneuver how our custom maneuver right but the thing is we here and the information is here we, we have one question from Martin. somebody asked a question okay good go ahead dr batson what time do i have to take this optimizer jennifer Opti valentine. Oh, <laughs> miss valentine <laughs> miss valentine you can take your optimizer either with your breakfast or you can take it with your dinner when you're taking your nerve restore i think you normally take nerve restore with dinner and you could take your optimizer with breakfast can we answer one more question yes of course Ms. Robertson, how, how can I use the Optic Plus with my prescription medication? Okay, good question. When you're using Optics Plus and you're using it with the, your other eye drops, all you need to do is ensure that Optics Plus is used either an hour before or an hour after any other eye drop that you're using. What does TD mean? TD? Gluc I think it's gl glutensine. Oh, yeah, that's, um, that's a, a glaucoma um, medication. So, yeah, so regardless of what the medication is, it must be used either an hour before or an hour after you would use um, eye optics formula. So whether you're using Zalatan, Comos, um, Zalatan, Lumigan, Bromopress, whatever the case may be, that's something that you could actually um, use our eye drops with it, but you're not using the eye drops together. They are not used, being used simultaneously. So you allow an hour before or an hour after with our eye drops. Good? So join us uh, in the next... Uh, few minutes at 2 15 we'll be joined by dj mamu so we'll be joining dj mamu on dj mamu dj mamu radio tt.com and we're going to be continuing our discussion and i'm going to highlight some of the products and services again of batson and associates take care and see you guys in a bit oh you're welcome miss valentine